I've been asked to teach you how to make a site model using free resources, such as GIS. My name is Jesse Dom. I'm a practicing BIM manager teaching you Revit for free. Let's dive in. So what I did was I found a random site in Auckland that looked like it needed development. This is number 17 on Kiwi Road. So let's go to Auckland Council Geo Maps. I just googled GIS Auckland, and this comes up. This is the best GIS system for the city of Auckland. Let's select Agree. and find our address. What we'll do is come to the tools, click agree, select this box. What this will do is this will define the area of the site map that we're going to be collecting. We're going to turn on contours, address, and parcel. You can turn on other ones, but this is really all that we actually need. We're going to change the features to AutoCAD DWG. Now you'll type in your email address and you'll click extract. So it seems like Auckland Council sends this information only during the work days. I requested this over the weekend and it wasn't until midway through Monday before I actually got the email. So I got the email and I saved it to a folder that makes sense. If I open up the CAD file I got in AutoCAD, this is what I see. If I want to just double check and make sure that this has actually got 3D content, the contours are showing off in 3D, which is fantastic. Let's go back to the top view. What I want to do first is check UN, enter. This shows me that the units are in meters. This will be important later. Click OK. Now I want to pick a point, PO, enter for point, and I select that. When I select this point, I can get the coordinates of where it is. So what I'm going to do is go to View and turn on Properties. These are the coordinates that we're going to be using in our Revit file. I'm going to open up a notepad so that I can copy these. Control C, notepad here, and I'm going to put that this is the X, control C, and, and this is the Y. Now we checked that the units are in meters. That means these dimensions are in meters. Revit is actually in millimeters, so we want to move this decimal place over by three points. That's all we need from AutoCAD. I'm going to create a new Revit file using the architectural template for my site file. There's a good reason why I want to keep these separate. Before we do anything, let's save the file. We'll call it first site tutorial. Save. Now the first thing I'm going to do is turn on the project origin and the project base point. Type VV, type S to come down to site. Expand that and turn on the internal origin project base point. In this case, we're also going to turn on the survey point. Click OK. Now all three of these live here in the middle. The project base point, if I tab, I can get to the survey point. If I move this away, this is effectively the origin that you would see in the AutoCAD file. This now, since the survey point has been moved, this now reads out as a coordinate location. This is still the center, the origin of our project. Let's undo. I'm going to come to Insert and link a CAD file. This is the AutoCAD file that we downloaded. I'm going to change this to Auto Center to Center. Level 0 is good, and we do want to orientate to view. Preserving the colors is OK. Layers all, and since we know what units we have, we're going to use meter. I'm going to untick this box because I don't want it changing anything. Click open. This is our imported CAD file. We can select this and we can move it. It's fine that we move it because we're actually going to be specifying the location. And this is something else worth noting. Since this is moving mostly straight over, Revit wants to keep it orthogonal. What I can do is I can hit tab and that'll mean that I can move it specifically to where I want. So I'll hit tab and get it to come to that point. Now my origin is in the right location. I'm going to come to Manage and go to Coordinates and specify coordinates at point. I'm going to hover over here and recognize that down in the bottom corner here, this is going to tell me what I'm hovering over. So I'm going to hover over this and right now it's saying Site, Project Base Point. That's what we want to be able to click on. So click and now this opens up the Specify Shared Coordinates. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy these numbers into the coordinates. Let's copy my X, and that'll be my east and west, and I'll hit paste. I'll come back here, select my Y, Control C, and paste for my north and south, and click OK. Now what happened was our site survey point moved. If I double click the middle mouse button, this will zoom extends. This will move the site survey point all the way down here. This means that our site was actually this far away from the origin point of where that site survey started. If I zoom all the way in, 
jumps around a little bit, we'll get back to our site. If I hit VV again, S, expand site, turn off survey point, click OK. Now we've got a site that we can work with. If I come to a 3D view, you can see that my starting le levels are down here, and my site is in 3D. Now that we're here, let's draw a property line. Let's go to Massing and Site, and select Property Line. I want to create it by sketching. I'm going to use the Pick Lines tool, because that way I'll be more consistent. I'll start here, and work my way around the site. Let's zoom in, make sure that we're accurate. Now that we have a property line, let's pick a project north. If we go to Manage, we can come down to Position, and we want to rotate our project north. Right now our true north is pointing straight up. That's perfect. But what we want to do is we want to rotate our project north. The reason why we can see this is if I show you, if this was at true north, I came down here, this would be grayed out. So come to your properties palette for the view. This is your properties for your level zero, the view that you're in right now. And right now let's change this to project north. Let's come to Position, click on Rotate Project North. What I want to use is a line selected line or plane. Let's click on that and click on this portion of the property line. This is giving you a little warning saying that some of these lines are off axis. It's just referring to your property line here because they're not perfectly orthogonal. Revit wants to let you know. Click OK. And now we're going to come back here again because we actually want to rotate this one more time. We're going to Rotate Project North and we're going to use 90 counterclockwise. There we go, we've rotated our project north. Let's select our site and come up here and use pin or PN. This will now pin this so that I can't accidentally drag it around. If I click and drag, it's not gonna move. Let's delete these elevations because they're no longer relevant to our orientation. Select the filter, unselect this, leave elevations and view selected, click okay, and then delete. All of these elevations will be deleted and that's okay. Let's draw some elevations around the outside of our project so that we can have full site elevations. Let's go to the wall tool and actually just draw a set of walls all the way around. I'm going to tab till I get to that endpoint, and tab till I get to that endpoint. Same down here, and endpoint. Now that I have these walls, the reason why I drew them is because if we come to view, elevation, 12 millimeter circle, when we draw an elevation, it's going to look for the closest wall face and draw a perpendicular line to that point. So I can click on here, I can move my mouse up here, draw an elevation on that side, that side, and that side. Now each of these elevations, they might not be perfectly orthogonal, they're true to that side of the site. So if I select this, I can expand that, and let's just extend the length of these elevations a little bit. I can actually pull them in so that they're only looking at the site that we're interested in. Let's select this head and do the same thing. That's much longer than it needs to be. And same with you. All right. These are all nice and tidy. Let's hover over this wall. Zoom and hover over this wall. Tab to get the loop of the walls and then delete. Now the reason why I drew these elevations was because I wanted to come here and extend these levels. I can extend that out, go to level zero, go to this elevation and extend these levels, coming in here and extend these over. I want to drag this up so that we can see the topography. Same thing with elevation four and drag that up, cool. Now if we come to 3D, we can see that our levels actually encompass the lot that we're looking at. I'm going to come down here, select this, and call this datum. I would like to rename the corresponding views, yes. Let's call this ground level. Yes. It's rare that I want to use that. Let's create a topography. We'll go to massing and site, click on topo surface, create site from import. We're going to select an import instance. Click on that, and then select the CAD file. It gives you this blue bounding box with the element you're about to select. Also, if I stop moving my mouse, you'll also see that it's the CAD file. If I click on that, I want to check none, and I just want to use the contours. Click OK. That uses the contours, and it creates all of these different points. 
that makes a 3D file. Hit the check mark, and now we have a site. Let's split the surface so that we'll have our site topography and the surrounding topography. Let's click on split surface, select this topo surface itself, come back to datum, use the pick lines tool, and select all of the property lines that we had before. You could have isolated these so they're a little bit easier to select, but it works. Since that's a full loop in there, if we come to 3D, this is now a separated piece of topography from the surrounding sites. Now we want to set this ground level somewhere relevant for our site. Let's go to elevation 1A. Let's move this up. And it's going to be set back there somewhere. So let's put it about here. Conveniently, that's 23.2. I'm going to drag this back here a little bit, and if we come back to the 3D, our level just perfectly encapsulates the site. Now the reason why I kept this separate is so that I can link in the house. I can move the house around without mucking about with the site itself, and the site coordinates are going to be independent from the house, and I can acquire those and put those together later. If I go over to Insert, Link Revit, I can go up a folder and find our first house tutorial. We can use this positioning because we're just going to move the house anyway. Click open. Now what that did is that brought in the internal origin to the same internal origin, the same bottom corner of that. If I go to elevation 1a, I can move this up onto my level. Come back to a 3D view. Come over to the top view and let's just roughly position this somewhere that's going to make a bit of sense. Now let's go to the ground level. This will give us the ability to mention this somewhere logical from the corner of the site. Let's go to here and then tab till we just get to that endpoint corner because we want to use a nice whole number. Same thing with this. Tab to that point and there. I'm going to click on my link now and I'm going to change this to and delete that rounded number and now this is a full number which is nice. Select you again, click on this, 10 meters, oh, we're going to have a very generous front yard. You could go around and figure out all of your setbacks and other things as well, but our very conservative little house is now sitting on this very large site. Let's go to the site elevation, bring this back up here. I can go to the visibility graphics and go to imported categories, turn this off, click OK, and now the cat file won't be showing up anymore. The reason why these levels look the way they do is because when we made the house bigger, we actually pulled everything back and we didn't actually go through and fix the levels in the back of the house. We'll do that later. If I go to my datum, I can change this from project north to true north. This way I can show the project north or true north, depending on which kind of site plan I want to set up. Let's leave this as project north for now. Let's go to visibility graphics, annotation and turn off levels. Go to imported categories, turn off the CAD file, and click OK. Let's select our site, change the material to just the default, click OK. Let's select our site and change the material. We don't have a grass material, so we're going to have to create one. Create a material, rename, type in grass, enter, come to appearance, we're going to swap out the material. We're going to type in grass, replace this with the current asset. Now let's, let's use grass generic because it's a bit lighter. Go to graphics, tick use render appearance, click OK, deselect that, and now we have a grass material. There we have it. We've got our house sitting on our site. Thank you for learning with me. If you haven't already, please subscribe so you can follow along with the development of this house and more. I'm going to teach you Revit.